welcome to the Clarion News Studio here in Kuala Lumpur. Today I'm joined with Martin Lim, where we'll be discussing the peer-to-peer -peer trading model. Hi Martin, thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you. So the first question I'd like to ask you um, is looking at the open electricity market, which was launched in late 2018 in Singapore. That's right. How has this impacted on Singaporeans' um, acquisition and consumption of power? So Singapore deregulated, started deregulation back in 2001. It was always for commercial industrial customers. So it wasn't until late um, 2018, in November 2018, where we went to full deregulation and domestic customers could sign on. And since then till now, I think uh, it's been a great success. Um, the, the EMA, the our regulators in Singapore, had, I think the last report they came up with um, said that we had like 34% acquisition uh, or conversion over to retailers, which is fantastic. Which means the last couple of months, we had a few more points up, hitting probably about 40 plus percent, maybe close to half, I reckon, of the population switched out. That's fantastic because everywhere else around the world, uh, in most other countries that have deregulated, you're talking about a single digit conversion rate. Um, Singapore's been so good at it, I think um, the biggest issue really, the biggest point really is, is that we had a massive delta between the retail price and the tariff. Um, so customers that switched out from the tariff to a retailer will save like uh, 20 plus or 30% of the power bills, which is a lot. That's significant, yeah. Huge, huge. Be presenting on peer-to-peer -peer trading. What are going to be some of the key messages that you want to highlight? Well, that's excellent. So in peer-to-peer in, in -peer trading, it's a bit of a, of a flavor of the month, or flavor of the year, so to speak, in the energy innovation space right now. A lot of um, startups are, are talking about it, how to do peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, but what we're doing different really is this. A lot of the startups talking about peer-to-peer -peer energy trading um, are very much microgrid solutions looking to scale up. We design our solution, um, it's called Synergy. We design Synergy to work on a utility size grid from day one. Um, so in Singapore, we ran a pilot back in October. Uh, it was successful. Uh, we ran with 15 participants all the way across the grid. Uh, we're also now talking to CMBX. Uh, we, we think we're going to be able to run a pilot in Malaysia itself to test it in Malaysia. And we would like to do a, 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 a reasonable, a significant enough sized um, pilot. And, and by, by, by that I mean a size that makes sense for the city level grid. If you're running a microgrid project, for example, you could do a pilot with like say, oh I don't know, 8, 10, 12 participants and the data bears out. But if you're doing a project that's supposed to work across a main grid, you really have to look at scalability. So one number one, geographical spread. It's going to be wide enough across the city to make sense and prove that, oh well, the system does work. It does allow for trade of energy across the grid. Secondly, a large enough sample size. So we hope to do something along the lines of like maybe 20 to 50 participants at the very least across the main grid itself. And third thing, and I think the most important part is this, because we designed our system to be to run across a citywide grid, to work with the utility. Um, so our system takes into account all the various charges and costs um, that come into play when the utility is sending power to you. So for example, things like uh, system charges, things like uh, transmission loss factors, it's all factored into the system itself. So it's very, very comprehensive. Is Asia ready for this type of model? Definitely, I'd say yes. So every major city that we've seen, um, deregulated or otherwise, the thing here is this, with with a lot more globalization, a lot more access to information, people can easily get access to the hardware required to build distributed energy resources, DERs we call them, um, like solar panels for example. You can go on to a lot of the, the Chinese websites and all your own PV system. Um, IKEA is talking about selling solar PV systems out of their own stores. Um, so it, it's very much a commoditized product right now. You can go in and do it. Um, the instructions how to set it up, YouTube videos, lots of stuff online, and you have no inclination to get your hands dirty, you can always call a contractor to get it up. So the point is, with a lot of these resources being planted on the grid itself, there are two ways you can look at this. Um, utilities could say, look, we'll, we'll put up a wall, or try to put up a wall and keep them out. Um, but again, that's not a smart thing to do. So the clever thing to do really is to say, let's just integrate these. How do you integrate them cleverly into the ex existing uh, distribution system? And we think peer-to-peer -peer is a fantastic way to do this because it allows for several things. It allows for the integration of these resources. It gives us real-time tracking of the energy data as it's consumed and produced. And more importantly, I think, it drives and creates a, a degree of, of proliferation. It gives greater meaning to want to plant solar. So how, how do we explain this? Really consider this. If, if I built solar panels on my rooftop, um, 
in the old way, I would just say, look, I'll just build enough for my own consumption. I'm just competing against the prices offered by a utility. But with a peer-to-peer -peer energy trading system, what that really means is that it allows me a mechanism to say, hey, I could actually put more. If I had, for example, if I was a business owner and I had a, 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 a large warehouse rooftop, for instance, uh, I could say, look, I could put more solar panels up there and sell the energy forward to someone else. Uh, the net result of this is that the entire grid will benefit uh, because number one, the burden of building all this asset is now decentralized. You don't rely on, say, the government or a big investor to come in and say, well, yes, do come in, um, save us, um, invest more into solar panels, build a massive solar farm. You don't have that kind of a, a, a requirement. You allow it to be decentralized and everyone contributes to the greater good. I think that's very, very important. Well, Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. I look forward to seeing some of the great results from the pilots in 2020. Definitely. And thank you for watching. For more industry-related content, please follow the link on screen.